FaZe Clan once had it all. They were one of the most beloved esports orgs in the world. They were gaming pioneers. This could be it. This could be it. Nice shot there. Gets the assist. It's all on Scump now. It's all on Scump and he is dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, phase to it. They helped make content creation what it is today. Now you need to chill out. I swear to God. I swear to God it's on my face. <laughs> Please win this game. Oh, yo, what is happening right now? And they were a huge part of bringing gaming into the mainstream. If you went up to an 18 year old kid today and asked him if they know who Team Liquid is, I'm sure you maybe you get like three, four out of 10. Maybe, but if you go to an 18 year old kid and ask him, do you know what phase is? More times than not, I would think like seven, eight, nine out of 10, they're probably gonna know what that is. But over the last few years, everything changed. The org is crumbling, their reputation is shot, and everyone is asking the same question. What happened to FaZe Clan? They had a great run, one of the biggest orgs in all of esports, gaming in general, really. And now they're buried six feet under. They've given me a home. But this is not the same team that I that I joined. It's just so crazy, man, the way that they've manipulated and lied and hid things and made things seem a certain way for so long. And like a lot of us just kind of went with it because we love FaZe so much, man. You guys just don't understand. Like even when people tell me, if I were you, I'd just go make my other thing and make it bigger and better than FaZe. It's like, you don't get it. This is something I loved, loved when I was 14 years old. All right, everyone, before we get into today's video, I just want to quickly remind you to subscribe to The Score Esports if you haven't done so already, like the video if you enjoyed it, and hit that notification bell. Also, check out our esports collection over at shop.thescore.com. You will not be disappointed. All right, now let's get back to the slow collapse of FaZe Clan. You've probably already heard of them. They are an esports powerhouse. And even if you didn't cheer for the teams that were lifting trophies, you likely know them from the era when their COD trickshot content dominated YouTube. Holy shit, that was so random. Oh, oh, no. 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 They were the um, skateboarders of their time, and sniping was their version of doing a, um, of doing uh, kickflip. So we had a new generation of people, including myself, who instead of doing uh, kickflips on a half pipe to Blink-182, we were doing ladder trick shots to 30 seconds of Mars. But a business can't survive on clout and trick shots alone. And FaZe Clan wanted to turn their fans' love and adoration into something more substantial. They wanted to be more than just something fans enjoyed in their spare time. FaZe aspired to turn their brand into a lifestyle. Oh, it's not FaZe. FaZe up. Oh, it's up. FaZe started out as an esports org in a way, so they expanded into as many games as possible. Oh, don't get turned on. Surely oh. not. No. Picks up the kill now. A oh, one versus the two. The shot caller in a 1v2. 39 seconds remaining. Krim is going to get finished. FaZe will take your season three championship. They struggled so much in Sydney, Australia. FaZe are your Intel Extreme Masters champions. At the same time, most of their individual content creators garnered massive followings by pushing the boundaries of their content to the limit and beyond. There we go. Oh, you got this. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh man. Hey, there we Two. go. Let's go. Like this. Like this. There you go. Hey. Three. Hey. Oh, and then FaZe started aiming for mainstream appeal by bringing massive celebrities into their business. Most notably, Snoop Dogg joined their board of directors, though most people saw it as just a marketing ploy. I am a part of the FaZe clan. FaZe up with us. <laughs> the thing is though, massive expansion comes with its own set of problems, especially when your business is built around the volatile esports industry and hard to wrangle content creators. In 2019, Fortnite player Tfue sued FaZe over a contract dispute. In 2021, FaZe dropped K, one of their content creators, and suspended three other members over their participation in a cryptocurrency scam. 
And throughout, there were plenty of allegations of FaZe members using slurs or generally behaving improperly. Simply put, FaZe were going further and further away from where they started. They weren't really about grinding games or winning tournaments anymore. They were an entertainment business. Which is why many OG fans questioned their loyalty to the org, despite the fact that FaZe was growing larger by the day. Back in the day, being on FaZe was a badge of honor in the COD community, in the sniping community. Now, nowadays, it's like there are a bunch of plenty other places that maybe not be as morally ambiguous, morally bankrupt that you can be. And look, obviously associating yourself with potential scams that are targeting your young audience is a pretty surefire way to kill any org's reputation. Is this sponsored by Save the Kids or not? <laughs> Yo! Yo! But FaZe wanted to grow. Esports and trick shots weren't making the company the money they needed, so they turned to investors. Investors who wanted FaZe to have new offerings to make a return on their investments. One such investment was a 2015 deal with the now defunct social media website Hubrick, and that money is what helped FaZe enter CSGO. It was also what led to FaZe getting new management. The gamers and content creators who used to run the show stepped aside for business executives to call the shots for FaZe. And those execs led a funding round in 2019, which is what brought tons of celebrities and their cash into FaZe. And in 2020, FaZe took out a $22.7 million loan, all to try to grow the org beyond esports and into the mainstream. But to a lot of people, all that looked like selling out, including one of the org's most prominent members. Unfortunately, we had people that came along and tried to like take advantage of it. And that was like our CEO in 2015. I'm not going to say his name because again, it might be, um, I, I, I think he still owns some of FaZe. That's Wait, what I'm really? I think, yeah, bro, because he, he tried to steal the whole company. So that was like a whole thing. If early phase felt like hanging out with your bros and having fun gaming, the new iteration of the org seemed more like an ever-growing collection of increasingly young pseudo-influencers who used their newfound fame to basically be what you could call shit disturbers online. Obviously, I don't want to have aimbot on my main account, but I'm pretty certain I have got aimbot on this account. <laughs> I don't miss a shot! I don't miss a shot, bro! Yo, we're cracked. FaZe still had plenty of representation within the esports space though, and even won some high profile events. Two breaks away! One more! They have done it! But one decision was about to put every part of the org in jeopardy. In July 2022, FaZe Clan went public, offering shares on the stock market. Once again, the company was looking to grow, and they needed money to do it. But things started out bad. Like, literally before they even appeared on NASDAQ. They've been trying to go public for a while to get buku bucks, but it hit a little bit of a roadblock when they had to refile because their estimates were off by $10 million. Going public not only exposed FaZe as a nearly insolvent venture that had squandered insane amounts of money on celebrity endorsements, it also shone a spotlight on the unprofitability of esports in general. Their lack of success on the market is a terrible thing for the esports industry as a whole, man. Like, people look at that, outside investors or people that want to be a part of gaming and, and they want to invest in it. They won't touch it with a 100-foot pole. What's more, several of FaZe's beloved OG creators came forward with pretty damning statements about how things were run internally. If I read you guys our esports numbers, bro, oh my, I got to, I have to, it's hilarious. Ready? Let's start. CSGO, revenue, 514. Cost of goods and services, 576. So negative things too. But we would keep CSGO because like, it's CSGO, you gotta keep CSGO. Halo Infinite, revenue 108, cost of goods 194 for a negative 86. PUBG Mobile, Revenue 125, cost of goods 37K, that's great. PUBG Mobile makes 87K a month. I think that's like the only winner here. Rocket League, 87K, but we spend 123. Rainbow Six, we make 80K, but we spend 124, so negative 40. COD, we spend 6K, because Atlanta Phase covers it. Um, PUBG, God damn, what the hell's going on in PUBG? PUBG, we spend 85K a month, but only make 4K. 
That's crazy. Negative 82 with that. Bro, and this is the crazy part. For, for Super Smash Bros, Valorant, Apex Legends, Valorant Female, FIFA Online, Fortnite, R1, The Flank, and FIFA, we make zero dollars. Obviously, there's a lot of problems with FaZe Clan. There's a lot of problems inside the company, outside the company. Things that if it were up to me, I would handle differently, but it's not up to me. It's never been up to me. In a way, FaZe is bigger than it ever was, but it's also smaller than it ever was. All of these collabs that we were doing with really, really big brands. You know what it is to me? All of these collabs that's coming out, it's like Band-Aid or silver tape on internal bleeding. That's the way I see it. And they think talent don't matter. They think that we don't matter because they think that they can do everything because they see the FaZe logo as the Nike logo and they can just do whatever they want. Even the most diehard fans who still clung to the idea of old FaZe had to admit it was nothing but a distant memory at this point. It's pretty undeniable that the FaZe of old is dead, but it's also hard to deny that the people holding a torch for how things used to be are being a little unreasonable. The org hasn't been the FaZe that was uploading trickshot compilations set to Breaking Benjamin for years, and expecting them to carry on as if they were would be pretty strange and unfair. That said, there are a ton of things fans could be upset at FaZe about, and justifiably so. But to those fans, FaZe didn't have to change. Sure, they probably couldn't do exactly what they did in 2012 and keep going. After all, the internet has changed a lot since then. But this quest for exponential growth, that's what actually did them in. It seems like money, fame, and ego drove these guys into making a bunch of narrow-minded decisions which, at the end of the day, made them unrelatable. Unfortunately, a phase that just stuck to esports would have a hard time funding their teams because, well, the economy we live in just wouldn't support it. FaZe had to move on to bigger things things or shrink and rethink their whole business model. FaZe Clan in its early iteration was a product of its time, just like the hundreds of content creators we never hear about anymore. FaZe's value was built on the reputation they gained during that time though, and that value collapsed when the rest of the world realized how shot their reputation was. It seems completely miserable and just this sinking ship, this festering wound that continues to ooze pus and it's all very public because now it's publicly traded so more people can see it truthfully phase clan is pretty much nothing like it used to be but putting aside all of the orgs other issues that is in and of itself perfectly okay it's also okay to miss what phase once was what it meant for you as a young gamer and the memories it helped you make but it's time to admit the obvious phase clan will never be the same you know, it's really sad to see what's happened over the last few years. Um, the corporation side of FaZe is what has grown. It's like a huge monster inside of the brand that is just hungry, nasty, disgusting. Like, I don't even know what words to put into like the, the corporation side of it. It's soulless. And that reflects in what we see. Many fans and even some of its founding members feel that FaZe lost its soul in a battle to make money. To be fair though, it's unclear if FaZe would even exist if it didn't fight that battle in the first place. But to those most dedicated fans, the ones that have stuck with the org since the very beginning, no FaZe at all might still have been better than the FaZe we have right now. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.